With Brood 10, or Brood X, set to emerge later this month across Ohio, Jenny Anden and I thought that Ohio's master gardeners should be prepared to answer questions about cicadas in general and brood 10 periodical cicadas specifically. Hi, I'm Dave Shuttler, a professor emeritus of entomology at The Ohio State University. I go by the professional nickname of The Bug Doc. My area of specialty is urban landscape entomology, which includes the insects and mites that attack trees, shrubs, perennial and annual flowers, and turf grass. So what is a cicada? Cicadas are relatively large insects that are closely related to other true bugs and bug-like insects. From the side, cicadas will look a bit like a giant aphid or a leafhopper. They have sucking mouth parts that arise between the front pair of legs. Males have a paired organ, the timbals, which are used to produce their distinctive songs. The songs are used to attract females that don't sing. The nymphs look like some kind of prehistoric crustacean. The nymphs have enlarged front legs that are used to dig into the soil. The nymphs feed by sucking nutrient-rich juices from tree and shrub roots. Many Americans call these insects locusts because some of our English colonial ancestors had never experienced cicadas, and when they did experience a periodical cicada emergence, they thought they were experiencing a biblical locust swarm. Hence, they give them the names locusts. However, true locusts are really grasshoppers. In Ohio, we have two types of cicadas, the annual or dog day cicadas and the periodical cicadas. Annual cicadas are generally green or brown, and individuals come out every summer, usually from July through the early part of September. The nymphs of these species usually take two or more years to develop. The males of these sing as individuals, and each of our several species produce different songs. Periodical cicadas emerge in massive numbers in May and remain active into June. There are different broods that take 17 years to develop in Ohio, but some southern species emerge every 13 years. Periodical cicadas are distinctive because all the species have black bodies, bright red or orange eyes, and orange legs and orange wing veins. As stated, there are many broods of periodical cicadas that occur in eastern North America. The southern species take 13 years to develop, and the northern species take 17 years. The species emerge as broods in restricted areas across eastern North America, almost every spring. Each brood may contain one to four species that emerge simultaneously. Without close inspection, each species of periodical cicada may look alike, but the males have unique songs. Ohio hosts four broods of periodical cicadas. These broods are designated by Roman numerals, which can be confusing to some. Brood 5 and 10 are the two largest broods, one emerging in the woodlands of eastern Ohio and the other one emerging in western Ohio. Brood 14 emerges in the south central part of the state, and partially overlaps Brood 5 and 10's territory. Brood 8 emerges mainly in Pennsylvania, but part of the brood can be found in the far northeastern border counties of Ohio. Periodical cicadas are unique to North America. While most other major world continents have cicadas, these species come out as individuals, not in massive broods. Cicadas are often considered to be good luck symbols in many cultures, and cicada motifs can occur on wallpaper, linens, pottery, and jewelry. Notice that brood 10 has three areas of emergence, Ohio and Indiana, Pennsylvania and Maryland, and eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, and northern Georgia. 
The nymphs of cicadas are designed to live in the soil. They have large front legs with stout claws that help them dig. They also have sucking mouth parts which are used to extract juices out of plant roots. When periodical cicadas are preparing to emerge, they often push up chimneys of mud in order to escape spring rain-saturated soil. Where the soil is well-drained, they will just pop out of a burrow near the soil surface, leaving behind a perfectly round half-inch diameter hole. When periodical cicada nymphs move to the soil surface, moles often till up the soil in search of these tasty morsels. The nymphs wait until the soil temperature at 8 inches reaches 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Most cicada nymphs will emerge after dark in order to avoid easy detection by predators, primarily birds. They often emerge at the base of a tree or shrub that they were using for food. They will climb vertical surfaces, including the sides of homes and outbuildings and fences. After they have climbed to a place where they can hook their tarsal claws into the surface, they will begin the molting process. First, a slit in the exoskeleton occurs down the back surface. The soft, unpigmented adult slowly emerges from the nymphal exoskeleton. Once most of the body has emerged out of the exoskeleton, the adult will often be hanging upside down. In order to expand the crumpled wings, the insect will bend over and grasp the exoskeleton shell with the legs in order to extract the tip of the abdomen. It will then hold this upright position while blood and air is pushed into the wing veins to expand them. Once the abdomen and wings have been fully expanded, the new exoskeleton is hardened and pigments will begin to show. The actual emergence and wing expansion often takes about two hours and several more hours are needed for the newly emerged adult to harden its exoskeleton and develop its full pigmentation. Most of the periodical cicada adult emergence will occur over about a seven to 10 day period, but there will always be some stragglers. The tree trunks and foliage may be covered with nymphal shells or cast skins. At peak emergence, there can be so many nymphs trying to crawl up surfaces that they may cause others to fall back onto the ground or the nymphs can be damaged by the claws of their fellow nymphs. This often results in a pile of dead and dying nymphs at the bases of trees. Entomologists believe that periodical cicadas emerge in mass as a method of controlling predation. These fat and protein laden insects are prime food for birds and a variety of mammals as well as ants and other insect predators. Even some snakes are known to dine on cicadas, which has prompted a recent internet scare that copperhead snakes will be invading yards. This has never been seen before. By emerging in such numbers, most of the periodical cicada predators become overwhelmed by the abundance of food and they stop feeding on the cicadas sufficiently long for the cicadas to mate and lay eggs for the next generation. There is evidence that birds will often eat their fill and then fly out of the territory as the singing of the cicadas interferes with the bird songs and communication. Once a female cicada has mated, she is usually ready to begin her egg laying process. She has already developed eggs in her ovaries from the food stores accumulated as a nymph. While we often see periodical cicadas using their piercing sucking mouth parts to suck sap from plant stems, this is likely for replacing water and sugars. The female uses an ovipositor that looks like a large diameter hypodermic needle. Each egg chamber will hold a couple of dozen eggs and after she has made a chamber, she will take a couple of steps forward and repeat the egg laying process. Some plants react to this damage and quickly stop nutrient flow past the point of the egg chambers. This causes the tip of the branch to wilt and eventually turn brown. 
This is called flagging. Some plants can heal the wound and maintain vascular flow, but the egg-laying scar may persist for years. This scar can be a point of weakness that more easily breaks in windstorms even years after the cicada emergence. Here are two examples of periodical cicada egg-laying scars. In the top one, egg-laying has just been completed and the plant is beginning to show some discoloration around the puncture wounds. The lower image is of a sycamore branch where the surrounding tissues are dying back and splitting open. Each periodical cicada female will lay several hundred eggs, usually in several oviposition events. The ovipositor is generally inserted into the sapwood just under the bark. Two rows of eggs are stacked per each oviposition puncture. Like the prolonged nymphal development period, the eggs also take up to six weeks to finish their embryo development. The tiny rice-sized nymphs hatch through the opening left behind by the ovipositor and they simply drop to the ground. They then quickly dig into the soil and begin their long development by sucking juices from plant roots. In this picture, the top layer of bark has been carefully removed to expose the two rows of eggs placed on each side of the branch. Every tree and shrub seems to react differently to periodical cicada egg scars. Some quickly flag, and others will only exhibit a few flags even though they may have had extensive punctures. On large trees, this flagging is not considered to endanger the long-term health of the tree. In fact, publications indicate that this nature's pruning thickens the canopy of affected trees, and the dead cicadas that drop to the ground help fertilize the trees with their decomposing bodies. Extensive branch damage on recently transplanted landscape trees, nursery stock, or in fruit orchards can greatly stunt growth, change the shape of the plant, or even cause fruit drop. Smaller fruit trees or recently transplanted landscape trees can be protected from periodical cicada egg-laying damage by covering them with bird netting. Netting with one half inch or smaller openings should easily repel ovipositing cicadas. Smaller mesh cloth or plastic may increase the heat within and promote foliar diseases due to poor moisture evaporation. So these are never recommended. Most pesticides that can kill periodical cicadas only do so by contact. So regular spraying may be necessary if fruit orchard or tree nurseries are located within an emergence area. Even systemic insecticides are of little use as the adult cicadas rarely feed much during their egg laying period. Brood X or 10 will have three species of mantis cicada that emerge at the same time over its range. Mantis cicada septum decum is the largest species and has distinctive yellow bands on the underside of the abdominal segments. This species makes a deep sound. Mantis cicada cassini is the smallest species and is completely black. The males make a buzz followed by a series of clicks. So I'd be Magic cicada septum decula are intermediate in size but are also completely black. The males make a continuous series of clicks for their song. There are often some strange things that happen with periodical cicadas. People occasionally find blue-eyed or white-eyed variants. These are quite rare, but well-known. Probably one of the strangest events is one that happens late in the periodical cicada emergence. People often notice periodical cicadas with a white or pinkish abdomen tip. 
These are individuals that have become infected with a unique fungus, Massospora cicadina. Initial infections are believed to happen when a nymph emerges from the soil and its body comes into contact with the fungus dormant spores. This infection takes a week or two to develop in the cicada's body, but the cicada remains active. Eventually, the fungal mycelium accumulates at the abdomen tip to sporulate. This causes the last few exoskeleton rings to drop off, which exposes the fungal spores. These spores can then cause secondary infections as infected live cicadas fly among the uninfected cicadas. Eventually, the infected cicadas die and the remaining spores drop into the soil where they can remain dormant for another 17 or 13 years. There are many dozens of cicada videos on YouTube and many websites that briefly discuss annual and periodical cicadas. But the website called Cicada Mania is the best informational resource you can find. This site is run by a bunch of cicada fanatics and they cover the entire world of cicadas. They have very helpful and easy to use identification images, distribution maps, and they feature the songs on most of the cicadas so that you can be like a birder and identify the cicada species just from its song. If you get the cicada bug, download the Cicada Safari app on your phone. This will allow you to post pictures and locations where you see this brood of periodical cicadas across Ohio.